Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video, we are gonna be talking about the books that I read in January. So I really surprised myself this month. I read six books in January, which doesn't sound like a lot, but with all the crazy stuff that happened in January, I'm quite surprised. Uh, January was also a weird month because I spent half the month in New York for winter break, and then I came back halfway to finish the month uh, just preparing for the beginning of my last semester of college. Ah, I know. So I came back like mid-January, and I feel like my reading really reflected this transition. I felt like the books that I read in New York were way more superior than the books that I had read in Minnesota and I don't know if that was a result of just my mood and me being really like moody with the changes and not really liking books or being really harsh on books or it was just the books that I read but yeah we're gonna talk about all the books that I read in January and how I like them now this is de definitely an interesting video I read like on two complete spectrums of like amazing and just like this did not do it for me so let's get started okay so the first book i read in january starting off this month super strong is on earth we're briefly gorgeous by ocean wong i have been looking forward to this book ever since i had read ocean's poetry in my asian american lit class and i kind of could not get um their writings out of my head it was just so beautiful and there were some like lines and imagery that was created that i just had never let go of since i read those pieces so i finally picked up this book finally did i've been trying to get it for the longest time mostly because i just can't commit to it i'm scared to read it because i am um, i think i have too many high expectations um but i ended up really enjoying this book i really think that it set the tone for the month and it got me super excited to read again i was like Oh my god, this is such an amazing book. Like, I can't wait to read more books like this. Um, basically, this story, the narrator is a son writing a letter to his mother who can't read. Um, and in this letter, he writes about his sexuality and his relationships, him growing up and his grief, and it talks directly to the mother as well. Um, another thing that I liked about this book was its nonlinear sequence, which I thought would be a little hard to follow, especially with like a letter, um, since most books I read in like letter format are like chronological. This was non-linear and I actually thought it added to the story. I think it was a really interesting way of how the narrator processed their grief um, and processed a lot of emotions and things and told a really great story. So all in all would recommend this book. It's very heartbreaking, very painful, but I do think it's one of those books that once you read it you just like want to reread it over and over again because a lot of things happen in this book although it doesn't seem like it and you just want to reread it to go over the facts and to learn more things about this narrator and the writing it's just like beautiful writing after beautiful writing so it's kind of hard to keep track of um and yeah i have so many quotes from this book but overall i would recommend this okay so then i figured that i needed a break from heartbreaking novels although this one wasn't that much of a change um i then picked up heartstopper volume one Guys, I have been trying to get this book for ages. Like, I think I bought a copy and it was accidentally volume two and I just never got around to picking up volume one, but I finally did. So now I have volume one and volume two and although I didn't get to volume two this month, I'm very excited to say that I loved Heartstopper volume one. It was so fast though, that's what I kind of like don't like about graphic novels is that you can't really savor it because I'm a fast reader and graphic novels are no exception. They are super fast to get through. This one took me like, I would say under an hour to read. Um, I really love the art style. I love the colors. It's very up my alley, very colorful and pastel and very bright. Um, and yeah, I had never really read a queer graphic novel um, or a graphic novel about sports. So I think the two of those, the combination of that was just like perfect and I really, really enjoyed it. And I don't think I've ever read anything like that. And please recommend me all your queer sports novels down below now because I'm on the lookout. Um, but I really hope to finish volume two and the rest of the volumes, especially before I think the film comes out or the TV show. I'm not really sure. It's been optioned. It's been in the production. Um, but I'm really excited to see that come to life on the screen because I really think it's a unique story. Um, and yeah, all for sports novels. 
Okay, so the next book I read was definitely my favorite book of the entire month, if not possibly the entire year. I know it's too early to say that, but this book really just blew me away. And I think it's because I came in with such low expectations. Um, and hold on there. So I read Empire of Sand last year by Tasha Suri. And while I was really excited about the premise of that, and I thought it was really well written and the story was great, I just didn't like it as much as I thought I would. So I came into to The Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri, um, Tasha's newest novel, with like low expectations, thinking like, okay, if I don't like this book, it's fine, because I didn't like Tasha Suri's other novel, but I was blown away. This book follows a captive princess and a maidservant who become unlikely allies in amongst the backdrop of this war that is happening in their world and they find ways to help each other and end up also falling in love. It is sapphic as well and I just don't think I've ever read a story like this. I think I've lately I've been really into fantasy. I've been on a huge fantasy kick and I don't think I've ever read anything quite like this story or this magic system. Now let me tell you if Tasha Suri can do one thing, it is beautifully written magic systems that have so much history, so much background, they feel like almost real and it's just so unique like you've never read anything like it so this one is kind of i would describe as avatar the last airbender kind of magic although it's literally not the same thing the only reason why i say that is the vibes were the same the magic system in the jasmine throne is very entrenched in nature and like spirituality um and i think that's something that i really loved like seeing an avatar like kind of it being connected to like spiritual side um so this one is the one in the jasmine throne is it has like the reason why i liked it so much ugh, i'm rambling is because they were just like different stages of the magic so there's three stages of this magic that you need to kind of go through a ritual for each stage to like keep advancing and I thought that concept was so freaking cool and it was so consistent throughout the story and the author really played with this idea to her advantage and the story is also beautiful like so many female heroines in this that just honestly go off in this book it's just like so amazing to see and beautiful and every page is just like action-packed like Tasha Suri can write like every page you're flipping you're flipping and you're like oh my god like the action won't stop like these characters won't get a fucking break from the absolute shit show that is happening um I would recommend this book if you're into really unique magic systems fast-paced fantasy books um if you're into sapphic romances in fantasy as well um also if you're into political intrigue this book has a lot of that this book has just a lot of everything and it gives you a little mwah, mwah, mwah of everything and does it so well highly recommend this i don't write books anymore but if i were to write this book it would be like a thousand and one percent over a hundred or like five million stars because this book was just amazing so on the opposite side of the spectrum we have our violent ends by chloe gong i actually have physical copies for these books because i read them here and i the ones that i read before were from new york um so our violent ends by chloe gong i read these violent delights as my last book of 2021 and while i wasn't blown away by that i really think the hype kind of kicked me in the ass because i was expecting that book to literally blow me away and it was just like meh for me except for the ending of course which is this huge cliffhanger and I was like okay fuck I need book two so like I bought book two and like what was the point <laughs> like I love the story and I really love the premise of this entire series which is kind of the only thing that's keeping me on so far but I feel like this book was just a whole bunch of like fluff and unnecessary stuff. I feel like the series was way too long and I feel like just this book in particular, maybe not the first one because the first one had kind of a more distinct plot, like you could, you knew the story. For this one, I had absolutely no idea what like the end goal of the characters were. Um, just anything really. I feel like there was just too much going on to the point where I was kind of like, there were so many subplots and I was like, oh my god, I don't know which one is the main plot. I don't know what the character's motivations are. And another thing is just the romance was really not selling me. I know this is supposed to be like a Romeo and Juliet retelling or a reimagining and I have never read Romeo and Juliet so maybe that's, maybe that, maybe that's why I don't get it. But I just feel like the romance was, it, it just, it kind of banked on being this enemies to lovers like blood feud 
uh, romance and there was no actual substance to it like I couldn't tell why they had feelings for each other or why they even loved each other like I was very confused um, but overall didn't impress me that much but I am glad I finished it okay so the next book I read was Beowulf I actually don't have the right translation here I read the Seamus C Heaney translation I believe that was but here I have the Maria Devana Headley translation um, this is also a really great feminist uh, translation of Beowulf and I didn't read this book to completion which is why I'm not including it here I did read some parts for class but I read Beowulf I'm not gonna say much because honestly I, I don't know what to say I, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be I don't know I just come into like a lot of classic and medieval and renaissance lit just like with really low expectations because I'm not a lit person I'm a creative writing person and if it doesn't have a story and it's not fast-paced and I can't follow along I just I lose my it, it loses my attention so I'm happy to say and report that Beowulf was actually pretty good and I enjoyed it I think within the context of our like class conversations where we were talking about it in a very politicized and racialized way so yeah oh I'm so scared to talk about this book okay the next book we have here is a portrait of a thief by Grace D Lee I I was just so scared to read this book so I got an early copy of this this comes out in April actually and I when I heard about it I had I knew I had to request an arc I don't know if you watched my ranking the 2022 books of this year but I saw this book in that video and I ranked it as like I need it now I'm calling the publisher whatever and I got it and I was so excited it sounded a little too perfect to me and I, I let me explain that. So obviously as a reader, as a Chinese American like reviewer, I like crave novels about like people with the same identities as me and this just seemed too perfect. Let me, I think I should do this instead. Let me read what like the premise or like the synopsis on Goodreads or like the marketing has written for this book because I just, I'm gonna read it. So it's Ocean Eleven meets The Farewell and Portrait of a Thief, a lush lyrical heist novel inspired by the true story of Chinese art vanishing from Western museums about diaspora, the colonization of art, and the complexity of the Chinese American identity. So obviously reading that as a Chinese American and being really, obviously I love heist novels and heist stories. I mean, have you read Six of Crows? Have you watched Ocean's Eleven? They're just amazing, fast paced, and they keep you on the edge of your seat. And in some ways this book just sorely disappointed me, but at the same time I think I was fulfilled. I don't know if that makes sense. So let me start with the good. I think a lot of the good of this novel was especially the complexity of explaining the Chinese American identity. I like how this novel included perspectives from, I think it was five, was it five? Five different college students who all had their different experiences with like their Chinese American identity, with China itself. Um, and with their culture and I really like the exploration especially as you don't really see a lot in novels uh, exploring this type of representation is the familial relationships um, especially between siblings and father and son. I think that's a huge one that doesn't really get talked about in novels with this representation. Now that being said I thought while it did really fulfill me in that way I was very heartfelt and heartwarmed to read a novel finally with characters that reflected my own story especially with the sibling relationships because oh my god do I have like weird <laughs> relationships with my brother and sister um, but on the other hand I think I was just totally misled and my expectations were way off the bar like they had freaking come off the bar because I was just sorely disappointed with this book I feel like where was the Ocean's Eleven like where was the farewell like I don't know I didn't get any of that and I think that's when like I'm completely fine with I think a book especially with this type of representation kind of misleading me like if the story isn't everything I chalked it up to be that's fine I think where it comes into play with this book was just that the bad outweighed the good like another thing was even though I like how they explored identity I feel like I didn't relate to any of these characters or didn't connect to them in a way I wanted to connect with them um 
I felt like the writing, the writing wasn't really up my alley, but that can just be overseen. Like everyone has different writing styles. And I think this one especially is one you kind of have to get used to because it's quite repetitive as I've noticed to the point where I was like circling words and I'm like, oh my God, or not words, but phrases. And I'm like, oh my God, like I've heard this before. This is so repetitive. And then I think the biggest disappointment of this novel um, was just like the heist factor. Like, I feel like this was not thought out that well. I wouldn't even really call it a heist because they are stealing things they are taking back Chinese art from Western museums but I just feel like for what purpose like it was never really explained in depth I wish it had a more in-depth explanation or conversation about the colonization of art which was kind of brushed over it was just kind of talked about in the end and then like not gone back to and then especially with the heist things I think heist novels are super unique because every little thing has to be planned every little thing has to be thought out and I feel like it just wasn't done well in this novel like you could it just wasn't fast paced. It didn't keep me on the edge of my seat. In fact, I was quite bored. Halfway through the book, I had to put it down just because I was like not interested in reading anymore or I didn't even know what was going on anymore because there was like another subplot um, from this like original mission that I was very confused about. So yeah, overall, I will be talking about this more, um, I think, because I think I need to let my thoughts process. But overall, I was kind of disappointed, but I would still highly recommend this book and I will still be sharing it on all my platforms, especially for the representation and the really unique descriptions of Chinese relationships, familiar relationships. So yeah, that was unfortunately my most disappointing read of the month. Okay, so if you're still watching, good for you. Thanks for joining me on my journey of the books that I read in January. I really hope to read some books in February as well. We'll see how my schedule fares. I'm not like keeping myself, I'm not making a TBR video. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in my next video. Bye.